Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be doodling these colorful jars of jam. This was so fun and satisfying to paint. I didn't actually plan this ahead of time. I just doodled mindlessly, but I'm quite happy with how cheery the overall doodle and colors turned out to be. So let's just get right into it by doing the pencil sketch. I'm going to begin by sketching out the glass jars. You can doodle this with a grid in mind to make it more organized looking or just in random positions with different angles like mine. As I mentioned, I didn't plan this out so I just drew them in positions as I go, just looking at whatever space I have and tried to scatter them in. I tried to also vary the shapes and size of the jars. Some are a bit more rectangular, some more like a vase, and some a bit rounded. With these three things in mind, you can also vary the height and width of the jars. That way you can have different variations of a few simple shapes. However, you can also make other weird shapes if you have different ideas in mind. For the lids, I'm just keeping them all the same shape for now. The only thing I try to vary so far is just the size. I'm drawing them out according to the size of the jars that I have in mind. This way I don't have to think about too many things at the same time. As you can see, the shapes that I'm drawing out are not overly accurate either for the jars. It's okay though because I want this to look more effortless as a doodle and I just find that if there are some crooked lines here and there, it actually gives the doodle a bit more character. So don't worry about making this look perfect, just try to go with it and have fun. From here, I'm quite happy with the amount of jars that I have on my page. I know that the composition is not balanced as there is a space on the bottom right that's still empty, but I can balance it out later with other elements so it doesn't really matter at this point. The next thing that I'm doing is to vary the lid of the jars and to also add other decorative elements like a tag or a string tied around the neck of some jars. I'm not going to add these elements to every single jar though, just a few so they don't all look the same. Next, I'm going to scatter some decorative elements. In this case, I'm going to draw out some fruits around the empty areas. It doesn't have to be a specific type of fruit and it doesn't have to be the correct size in relation to other fruits either. I'm just thinking about filling in the space to balance out the composition. Once I've added in the fruits, if there are any other spaces that need to be filled, I'll just add leaves or if the position is a bit long and awkward, I decided to add some cutleries as well. Just think of simple shapes. To doodle, you don't want this to be overly complicated. You can also add things like flowers or other easy elements. Then once I'm done with the pencil sketch, I'm just going to outline everything. I'm using my Sakura Micron pen in the size 03 and in the color sepia. It's not necessary to use the exact same materials as I am. You can use whatever pen you have available. Just make sure that it's waterproof so you can paint on top of the pen outline later. For the larger loose leaves, I decided to add a bit of texture around the sides. I followed the basic outline of the leaves, but I just created wavy or jagged lines. But this is completely up to you, I was just having fun with this one. So once I'm done, I'm going to erase the pencil marks and make sure that the outline is clean. After that, I had a look around again and I decided I want to add more small decorative elements. I added some small fruits and also bees with a fly trail behind it to fill in the awkward spaces. Since they're just small tiny elements, I was comfortable enough to draw it on straight with my pen. However, you can always use pencil first to make sure that they're positioned the way you want them to. 
fairly happy with what I have so far, so let me just go over the colors before we start to paint. Gray of Gray by Holbein, Yellow Ochre by Holbein, Hansi Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith, Permanent Green Number no. 1 by Holbein, Yugan Bosch by Daniel Smith, Vermilion by Holbein, Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, Crimson Lake by Holbein, Indigo by Schminke, Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, and I'll also be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. Paige Martins. Let's begin to paint. For the first jar, I'm going to use a medium consistency of Quinn Red. As I'm painting all the jars, I always leave out a bit of white space near the outline, and I always want to play around with the value slightly while the surface is still wet, so in this case, I added Crimson Lake. For the next jar on the left, I'm going to use a mix of vermilion and new gamboge to create an orange. I'm going to paint it the same way as I painted the first jar by leaving out a bit of negative space surrounding the jar and then adding a darker value by adding more vermilion into the mix for the top part of the jar. For the jar in the middle, I'm just going to use vermilion as is, and because I'm only using vermilion, I'm going to play around with the value by adding more water at the bottom, so the top is slightly darker. The surface of the first and second jar is still a bit wet, and I decided to use the darker value for the bottom part of the jars, and the color will just spread out naturally. For this next jar of jam, I want it to be blueberry flavored. I used indigo as the main color and then I added a bit of crimson lake to brighten up the blue. I first use a light to medium consistency to just paint the base and then I use a thicker consistency for the top and the bottom while the surface is still damp. For this next one, I want to make a grape flavored jam or a grape preserve. As for the color, I used the exact same mix but I added more Crimson Lake this time to make the color a bit more purpley. Just like before, I used a thin to medium consistency first for the base and then I added a slightly darker tone by adding more indigo in the mix and just dotting it in. Next, I use a mix of permanent green with New Cambodge and a touch of vermilion to create the base. For the darker tone, I use a slightly thicker consistency, but I think the surface was a bit too wet, so it didn't really take in the extra pigments. Next, I'm going to create a deep red by using Crimson Lake and Vermilion. I'm just going to spread it out around the surface and then add in more Crimson Lake in the mix at the bottom. Lastly, I'm just going to use indigo here. I use a medium consistency and just spread it out. Then for the darker value, I just use a thicker consistency of indigo at the bottom. Next, I'm going to add textures to the jam. For the first one, I'm using the same orange mix and I'm just painting on short lines in different directions. For the next one, I'm just going to use Crimson Lake to add in dots. The color is quite dark here, so I'm just going to clean out a bit of paint and paint on lighter dots as well. For the textures, I'm just using the same color mixture, so for this one, I use Indigo and a bit of Crimson Lake. I just tap it in to make sure that the surface is uneven. I'm doing the same for this one. For the color, I just use Vermilion and I darken the bottom portion of the jar. For the grape jam, I use a mix of indigo and crimson lake. I just dot it in using quite a thick consistency and then I thin out the paint and paint on more dots at the bottom. Going back to the blueberry jam again, I'm just going to paint on more dots. For the green, I start by using the same base color mixture. I'm just dotting it in using a medium consistency. Then I'm going to scatter the dots closer together at the bottom. I then use a thick consistency of indigo so that it almost looks black and paint on really small dots. Next here, I use vermilion and crimson lake to paint on the dots just like the other jars. I'm going to go back to the vermilion jar after this and use a thicker consistency of vermilion to create the dots on top of the textured surface. I'm going to soften some of the dots by just smudging it in using a clean damp brush. 
For this last one, I added a thick consistency of indigo at the bottom of the jar just to darken it. I then paint on the dots using the same color. I'm also going to darken the bottom parts of certain jars by using a darker value of the same base color. As for this middle jar right here, I decided to brighten it up by glazing a bit of new gamboge. I'm fairly happy with how the jars look and I'm going to move on to paint the decorative elements. For the tags, I actually started out by using Jean Brilliant Dark at first, but I ended up painting over it, which is why the color is not in the description at the beginning. For the fabric, on top of some of the lids, I just used Buff Titanium as the base color. As for the other lids, I just use a darker value of the same color. So as an example for this one, I use the same New Gamboge and Vermilion mix, but I use more Vermilion in the ratio to paint on a checkered pattern. For the jar in the middle, I used a thick consistency of vermilion and I mixed it with a little bit of crimson lake to darken the red slightly. Of course, to paint the lines, it's easier to use a slightly drier brush load so the paint doesn't puddle up. If your paint is too watery, I would suggest for you to dab the excess paint with tissue and try to take more pigments without added water. Moving back to the colors now, I use a thick consistency of permanent green and I added new gamboge and a touch of vermilion for the green jar. As for this purple one, I just used the same mix of crimson lake and indigo in a thick consistency. As for this blue jar, I just used a thick consistency of indigo. For the fabric on top of the lid, you can decorate it however you would like to. I'm just doing a simple design by creating dots using Crimson Lake. And then I'm going to use a bit of the green mix to add some leaves. This is going to be painted very loosely and quite abstract looking. And your eyes can make it out to be whatever it wants to be. Now moving on to the fruits, I'm going to start out by using New Gamboge to paint the base color of the orange. I then added a bit of vermilion and dotted at the bottom parts of those oranges while the surface is still damp. For the tiny blueberries, I'm just going to use a thin consistency of indigo to paint the base color for now. As for the strawberry, I use a mix of vermilion with a touch of crimson lake and I'm just painting it halfway through and then I follow it up with a bit of buff titanium at the top. For the strawberry leaves, I use the same green as whatever I already had on my palette from the jam. As for the other leaves, I decided to add a bit of indigo into the green mixture to make it more of a darker green for a slight variation in the tone. By changing up the ratio, you can create different tones of greens. As you can see, by adding more indigo here, the green looks a bit darker and a bit cooler. So I decided to reduce it for the rest of the leaves by adding more permanent green into the mixture. For the cherries here, I use a thick consistency mix of vermilion with crimson lake. And while painting this, I also left out a little bit of negative space following the cross contour line of the cherries to give it a glossy look. Going back to the oranges now, I used the same mixture from New Gamboge and Vermilion and I'm going to use a thin consistency of this orange to just tap on and dot with the tip of my brush at the bottom of the oranges to create the uneven texture. As for the bees, I just used a thick consistency of Hansi Yellow Medium. Then onto the cutleries, I just used Yellow Ochre in a medium to thick consistency. I also decided to paint over the tags using this yellow ochre because I felt like the color was a bit too dull in relation to the other colors we have so far on the page and the yellow ochre should just balance out the overall color of the composition. For the wings of the bees here, I just used a thick consistency of grey of grey. Then going back to the blueberries again, I decided to layer on a bit more indigo at the bottom portion of the blueberries just to make them a bit more round. <music> 
I'm also going to go over the strawberries again using a thick consistency of vermilion at the bottom of the strawberries then using a clean damp brush to soften the blend with the rest of the base color. You can leave the doodle here but I always love adding dots to the composition just to make it look a bit more fun and festive. I use the same colors as each jam in the jar to paint on the surrounding dots so the overall composition becomes a bit more fun and cheery. I try to scatter the dots randomly in empty spaces but as a tip while doing this I would suggest for you to stop and look at the overall composition from time to time before adding on more dots because there's a chance of going a bit overboard which I accidentally did after I reached the bottom of the page. After I realized I painted too many dots, I stopped myself here and next I move on to paint the highlights using a thick consistency of bleed proof white. I like to paint on lines following the cross contour lines of the jar and I'm also going to add highlights to some of the fruits as well. As final detail to this doodle, I decided to draw on the flavors of the jam on the jar. Here I'm using my white jelly roll pen but it wasn't thick enough and the ink wasn't coming out very well since it's quite an old pen. So I'm just going to use bleed proof white instead and apply it using my small size 0 brush. I'm just drawing out a simplified version of the fruits and I also went over the drawings I made using the white pen to make sure that the lines are a bit more visible. Here I decided to go back to the oranges again using a bit more vermilion into the new gamboge. I painted a line at the bottom of both oranges following it up with the dots for the textures just to refine it a bit further. Then lastly I'm just going to draw on the fruits or the flavors of the jam on the tags. You can also put writings if you would like to. And that's it for this doodle. I'm really happy with how colorful this turned out to be even if it wasn't intended at the very beginning. I hope this is a nice break for the gloomy winter months. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links and the link to the outline will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!